questions here, and then we're going to get to the order entry ticket, which is remarkably easy because there's some really quick shortcuts that, that the IBFX platform allows you to take advantage of, and it just makes it ridiculously easy. Okay, so uh, as far as that spread goes, drop me an email, and I'll, and I'll send you that link on that website, and I'll, obviously, like I said, you have the bid ask and as well as the ticket to see the spread. This uh, question here about whether the session is recorded. Yes, if I'm doing everything right, the session is being recorded. But of course, you've got my email address, and um, by all means, uh, please feel free to use it. That's why it's there. And some of this that we're covering today will just de facto be a part of what we'll be doing for the rest of the month. Okay. As far as the function of the expert advisors. Um, the function of the expert advisors is really for automation, and I won't proclaim any expert expertise at being uh, at, at expert advisors. I know they're a very powerful, very popular aspect of the platform, but I, I will tell you this, and this is my honest opinion. Before you automate anything, whether it be the trading or even an indicator, I think there should be a base level of understanding of what it does. Um, while I think an automatic transmission on a car is great, to me, I, I learned how to drive in a manual. I don't mind automating it. sure makes life easy, but I want to make sure I know how to drive a, a stick shift as well. Well, anytime you're going to automate anything, and even the process of, of, of developing, designing, or requesting the design of an EA, you have to have a certain idea of what the components are going to do, and that, I think, in my opinion, my humble opinion, uh, requires some discretionary understanding, some understanding of what it does before you go about the process of automating it. But I, I will be happy to discuss um, the function of EAs, and we'll probably do it during that Super Saturday four-hour extravaganza that we're going to have, okay, at the end of the month. Okay, so what is the cable? Yes, okay, you know, us traders give nicknames to everything. I don't even think I call my friends by their real names. We can't help it. I think it's part of our wiring. Every, one, every pair, at least the popular ones, have a, a nickname. Uh, the Euro US dollar will sometimes be called the fiber. Uh, the, the British pound US dollar is what's called the cable. So if I refer to the cable, that is the British pound US dollar. Uh, the dollar yen is very creatively called the dollar yen. Uh, you'll see the dollar Swiss franc called the Swissy. The dollar Canada is often called the Canada or the loonie. Okay, for the loonie bird that's on the, the printed money there. Aussie US, the Australian dollar US dollar is often called the Aussie. The New Zealand dollar US dollar is often called the Kiwi. Um, I've heard a lot of crazy names for the British pound Japanese yen. Some complimentary, some not so. <laughs> but I've heard a lot of different names for that one as well. But we, we have a lot of, especially for the most commonly traded pairs, uh, there'll be uh, short, shorthand names for them. Fiber, cable, Swissy, Canada, etc. So the cable is the British pound U.S. dollar. Okay, the alert tab. Sure, we'll, we'll cover that. Uh, the alert tab is an interesting tab, and let's go ahead and bring that up here. Um, you can create a new alert. And what I basically did is I brought up the terminal window by double-clicking it again, right? Right-click the white empty space and click Create. And what you'll get is an alert editor pop-up window. You could ask it to enable sound, and there's a um, file, actually even send you an email. And, and what, all you're basically doing is if there is a price level at which you would like to engage the market, whether it be an entry or, or an exit, you can actually ask it by specific pair to tell you a specific condition, right, greater than, less than, maybe even a time, and then give it a value. So if you want to get out or you want an alert, or the euro US dollar, uh, when the bid is greater than or less than a certain amount, you pick the actual condition, put in your price, and you can basically set the alert by clicking OK. Let me mention a few things. Um, basically, the timeout is telling you how often or, or the, how often it will continue to alert you. So every 10 seconds, this thing will make the noise or whatever you've asked it to do. 
and the maximum iterations are how many times it will attempt to do so. So you don't, you know, you don't necessarily want this thing trying to contact you 1,000 times. Maybe five is enough. So every 10 seconds, five times, it will, it will try to contact you. Maybe 20 is enough. I don't know what that number is, but this is how many times it's going to attempt to communicate with you until you basically acknowledge that you've received it. Okay? If you click OK and it immediately makes the alert, like a little bing, that means you've likely created a condition that is incorrect and that you have to correct it. You need to modify it. Okay? So if that does happen, once that alert becomes a listing here, you can actually, you can actually, let me just do this here real quick. Well, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, see how it just went bling? When it does that right away, I hope you guys heard it, it makes a little chime. When it does that right away, that means something, you haven't done something right, okay? Because the bid is less than, right now, 4,000, 1.4000, right? So I need to right-click and modify. So what I really want to say maybe is the ask where the bid is greater than, right? So when that little chime went off, as soon as I clicked OK, the system is telling me that something about the way I set my alert isn't quite right. So again, you right-click it and modify it. Everyone with me there? And alerts are great because if you are like me, a, and by the way, you can delete the alert as well, okay? If you're like me, basically a, a single private trader here, um, having the alerts is like having a, a second set of eyes. You can be a little bit more proactive because you might be, you know, analyzing something else, another chart, and all of a sudden you realize that, oh, I missed my price. Having the alert keeps you from uh, necessarily missing that. Okay, you'll have a, you have an ability or a greater likelihood that if there is a particular condition that you are waiting on, you've got a second set of eyes looking at something when you may not or when you may be distracted. So it's uh, pretty helpful. As far as how many templates can be created, um, I haven't run into a limit yet. I'm sure there is at some point, but I know you can create uh, literally dozens. Okay. As far as the time frames go, uh, no. Whatever the whatever the options are here, and you notice that I've got rid of the one minute and the monthly, but these are the options for the time frames. So if it's not there, uh, it's not a, it's not a time frame that can be. Uh, used. However, I will mention that these are pretty much the most po the most popular and the most psychologically relevant time frames. So you've got a pretty good selection here. But I understand some of you might want different ones, but these are the ones we have access to. Okay, so again, if I wanted to change the chart and make a new profile, I could simply highlight the symbol and I'm going to drag and drop, in this case, a dollar Swissy or the Swissy on all four charts. Just drag and drop. If I want to create a profile here of the Swissy, I can go to File, Profiles, Save As, and I can call this Quad Swissy. You know, whatever you want to call it. Make sure the name, name means something to you. All right? And these are your profiles. So now I've got the Quad Swissy as a profile. One of the three that we've created here during our time together. You can create really any kind of profile and any kind of template you want. So if you want a particular, a particular layout of different studies on the same pair or time frames, whatever, if you can create an individual chart with the look that you want, you can save the, the collection of charts as a profile. It's really whatever you want. We could make four different indicators on these four charts and save that as a profile. Four different pairs, whatever combination of time frames with whatever com combination of indicators. If you can create it, and you can see it right here on your screen, you can save it as a profile. Just as you can save any kind of collection of indicators, colors, whatever, on an individual chart as a template. So a template is the individual settings for, for the chart. The profile is the, the chart collection. Everyone with me there? Some people might call a profile a layout, you know, all the different charts together, the layout. All right, let me go ahead and get to the new order, because while this is very simple, I think it's really important. 
because this is how we communicate our ideas to the market. I think a lot of people spend the time to do all the great analysis, they create great profiles and templates, but then they forget the way that you communicate all that analysis and your ideas to the market.